Okay, so today I woke up to a gazillion Discord pings, all saying some version of the same thing. Oh my god, we got AirPods Pro 3 measurements. Oh my god, they're so much worse. And this is indicative of the same problem we had with the AirPods Pro 2, which we've not really talked about on this channel, but it's time to talk about it. Because I don't want the whole discourse around the measurements of AirPods Pro 3 being the same hotbed of confusion they were for the AirPods Pro 2. The problem is that all of you are doing it wrong. What I mean when I say all of you are doing it wrong is that both the people measuring and presenting this data as well as the people interpreting that data are making significant enough errors and lack enough context that even today, even some of the nerdier places on the internet, most of the people don't know how to collect or interpret these measurements. So to talk about this issue, we're gonna have to talk about the AirPods Pro 2 specifically because this is where a lot of this started. So as we've said before, the AirPods Pro 2 is one of the most advanced audio playback systems on the planet. What we mean by that is that under the hood of the AirPods Pro 2, there are a whole bunch of active processes that are adaptively tuning the AirPods Pro 2 to adapt well in a certain given circumstance. The one that most people will probably be familiar with is the volume dependent equalization. So the AirPods Pro 2, when used with an Apple device at least, if you're listening to something at low volume, it will boost bass and treble uh, because we don't hear as much bass and treble at low volumes. Whereas at high volumes, it's cutting bass and cutting treble relative to that because at higher volumes, we don't need as much of the energy in those bands to actually hear those frequencies. But the other active process going on under the hood here is arguably way cooler but it's also way more opaque and something that a lot of people don't know about or know how it works. And that process is what they call the adaptive EQ. I think in their marketing, they say something like it delivers consistently excellent sound to all listeners or something like that. And yeah, it does, but that's not easy. So let's talk about how they do that. So the first thing people need to know about devices like this and the AirPods Pro 2 especially is that they have a microphone in the nozzle that constantly monitors the sound pressure in the ear canal that makes adjustments for a few of the processes. So for example, like the active noise canceling and transparency mode, they both take some of the information from this microphone pointing in towards your eardrum and use that to tune the ANC and transparency to be as effective as possible. But this microphone is also listening to the sound in your ear canal for music, movies, podcasts, whatever you're listening to, and adjust that in real time so that it hits Apple's intended frequency response or their intended sound target. For those who aren't aware, in-ear headphones with wires and stuff don't do this at all. So when you put a typical wired in-ear headphone into two very different ear canals, say like the IEC 60318-4 coupler that's been used for years and years as a simulator for testing how IEM sound, and the new 5128, which is a lot more advanced, a lot more human-like, you'll see that a wired IEM differs extremely extremely widely under a certain frequency, around two kilohertz, let's say, whereas the Apple AirPods Pro 2 basically doesn't deviate at all. Well, okay, if Apple is tuning it to be the same frequency response under a certain frequency, regardless of the ear canal it's placed in, why do so many measurements of the AirPods Pro 2 look so weird? Here's the problem. Most of the people measuring these devices either don't know that they do this or don't know how to manipulate this system to get Apple's intended frequency response. What it is functionally led to is most of the measurements out there, and I mean like 98% of the measurements out there for the Apple AirPods Pro 2 just being flat out wrong. So let's talk about how you measure one of these devices properly because there are a few things you need to account for. The first is the wear sensor. So Apple has a, a setting in their AirPods Pro settings that is automatically detect when placed in ear or something to that effect. It basically has a sensor on the back of it that measures the reflectivity of the surface that it's rested against. So if you just place the AirPods Pro 2 in a silicone ear like what I have here, you're not gonna get the active system triggered properly. So you actually need to put something in the ear that simulates human-like reflectivity. Um, a lot of people used ham. We have used deli meats of various types in the past. Or you can use uh, certain types of keyboard cleaner gel. I think some people also use tin foil. Now, the second thing is something that wasn't really known for a while until a user by the name of Maya TL came into spaces like Discord and Audio Science Review and educated people on what the active system was actually doing. What Maya would say is you need to do what's called priming. So you need to prime the system with a music-like stimulus to prepare the AirPods Pro 2 with the right frequency response for music playback. 
So you need to either feed it wide bandwidth music, pink noise, or M noise, which is a more esoteric test that kind of splits the difference. You need to feed it one of these three stimuluses to get the intended frequency response of the AirPods Pro 2. Most people haven't done this. So most of the measurements you'll see, even from incredibly nerdy sites like Squiglink, you're not gonna see the correct frequency response because most people aren't priming the device. So because most people measuring these devices aren't considering the wear sensor and aren't accounting for the adaptive EQ's effect on the frequency response and aren't priming it to make sure that they get the correct frequency response, most of the frequency responses you're gonna see out there are wrong. And this doesn't even touch on the fact that especially for the 7-Eleven equipped systems, so the older, less accurate systems, we now have a target methodology that compensates for the error of these systems. But a lot of people will evaluate the AirPods Pro 2 against these new targets, which is wrong because the AirPods Pro 2 is compensating for the deficiencies of that system. Which brings us to the second half of the problem, which is most people, when happening upon a measurement of the AirPods Pro 2, don't have all of the context necessary brought to this measurement to understand how to unpack it properly. Which is why you see a bunch of people either sharing the wrong measurements, sharing the right measurements, but against the wrong targets, or are posting the right measurements and don't have the correct context to unpack it properly. So they say things like, this 6K peak is going to be gnarly for everyone, when it actually isn't. So how do we fix this? When it comes to the AirPods Pro 3, we need to wait until reputable sources who know how to measure all of this stuff and have the most up-to-date measurement gear, like the 5128, have measurements of these devices to share because frankly, that's the only way we're gonna get reasonably close to how this responds in the human ear. And the last thing we need to do is just be a whole lot less certain when it comes to measurements of in-ear headphones. The fact is we don't know how these devices are responding in our ears like we kind of do with over-ear headphones. We don't know that what you see as a peak on a given measurement is actually going to sound like a peak. So just be aware that when trying to unpack a measurement from a system that's this complex, you have to be a lot more considerate and bring a lot more grains of salt to the table than you otherwise would. If you want to discuss any of the information I've talked about here or ask any further questions, reach out to me on our Discord, which will be at discord.gg headphones. You can just ping me in there. My name is Listener. And you can also find me on the forum at forum.headphones.com with the same username. And lastly, I just want to give a shout out to headphones.com who makes educational content like this possible in the first place. So if you really like educational content like this and want to see more of it, definitely make sure to consider headphones.com for your next headphone, IEM, DAC, speaker, cable, whatever purchase. With that, I think that's it. So I'll let you guys go. Later.